I've been a long and firm believer that anything made miniaturized is automatically like a million times cuter, and Baby Yoda pretty much proves my point. So of course, I had to do a painting of the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. <laughs> Three of my favorite things in the world are art, tea, and anything Disney, so I'm going to combine all of those things into one piece of artwork. I started with a really rough thumbnail of the basic composition, and then of course I just had to rewatch most of the Mandalorian episodes to get some really good reference photos. I figured out all my details, so now I just need to copy my drawing over. Alright, so now I've redrawn my image onto the canvas. I decided to add a round shape in the background here. I'm going to keep it as a vignette sort of composition, but that way they would feel a little more grounded in the space. I've gone ahead and you can't see them all, but I pulled out a whole bunch of different paint tubes and colors out around the edges here, as well as a variety of paint brushes. And now I'm ready to get started. And of course, I'm going to start with my background shape. And because the Mandalorian himself is going to have a good bit of silver to him, I want to go with a metallic gold for this sort of shape back here. I think that'll hint kind of nicely towards Tatooine and the sandy, deserty shapes and planets that keep popping up, such as where Baby Yoda was found. I think that will tie in nicely and contrast with the Mandalorian's colors. I'm starting with sort of a medium-sized brush, and I'm going to go around and fill in my whole edge. Once I've edged in with sort of a medium brush on the outer edges here, I go in with a much smaller brush to get around all the more detailed areas. Then once I've got my edging pretty well done, I can go back in with my larger brush and fill in the bulk of the space. I'm not afraid of brush strokes. To me, if I'm making a painting, I think it's allowed to look like a painting. If I want something to be perfectly smooth and crisp, and have that CG feel, then I'm going to do my artwork in, you know, Illustrator or Photoshop or something. But in this particular case, I'm okay with it having a painterly feel because it is a painting. And once I have the gold entirely laid in, I'm going to just add a second coat. Now that I have my second coat of the gold, again, I'm not worried about perfect, smooth, complete coverage, but there's a pretty good coverage of the gold metallic, even though there are some brush strokes. Again, I'm perfectly fine with that. And now I'm going to move on to the foreground. In particular, I'm going to start with the stools that the two characters are sitting on. I don't want to put too much detail into these stools, they're obviously not the focus of the illustration, but I want them to have sort of a rough hewn sort of feel to them, something you would find in some weird little cottage on some desert planet, not something that you're going to find in some really fancy parlor somewhere. And now that I have baby Yoda's stool done, I'm going to go ahead and just repeat the same thing for the Mandalorian stool. Alright, and now that both stools are completed, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of a cast shadow. That way they're not just sort of hovering in nothingness. Okay, so now that the background is done, I can move on to the foreground. And that is going to start with the Mandalorian. This is definitely one of those cases where the source material is kind of hard to go by. The character is in a lot of really weird lighting situations, changing it constantly, so I'm kind of having to just sort of make it up a little bit. Artistic license is a thing, right? So I'm using a bunch of sort of dirty, muted, gray sort of tones. That seems to sort of be what is happening. I mean, in general, in Star Wars, that's what you see a lot of clothing, so it kind of works for me. So to combat that, I made his pants a little more on the brown side than, say, his shirt area. 
Now that I have the majority of the Mandalorian colored in, I'm going to go ahead and switch to this metallic silver paint to do his fancy new uniform pieces. So unlike the gold where I did two coats to get a very high shine, high coverage metallic, I'm just going to do one thin coat over all of his armor pieces. Okay, so now that I have the silver metallic laid in, I'm going to go back in here and do a little bit of shading and add a little bit of detail to these areas. And to do that, I'm going to use some of the same sort of grays and blacks that I was using on the rest of his outfit. And that finishes up the Mandalorian, so from Mando, we can now move on to Baby Yoda. The hard part for Baby Yoda is getting the right color of green. And when I had a color that I liked that felt very Baby Yoda, I just went with it. And just like with Mando, Baby Yoda's in a lot of really weird lighting situations throughout the show, so sometimes it can be really hard to determine what color he actually is supposed to be. So I definitely wanted to go with a color that I think felt right more than maybe was technically correct. When I was re-watching the episodes to get some good reference photos, an important thing that I felt was part of the character was how he's kind of got these little sunken in little eyes. I think that adds to his little pitifulness and I really wanted to make sure that I get that across. One of the things I love about him is that even though he's a baby, he's still got like the little wrinkly forehead. He's kind of like a pug. And one of the issues I run into when I'm doing, say, a more fashion illustration is that you have to be careful that you don't do too many marks or lines because that can make a person in an illustration look a lot older, more wrinkly. But with Yoda here, that kind of adds to the whole feel of him, so it kind of works to my favor. And now that I'm done with Baby Yoda, I can move on to the table and all the tea accoutrements. I'm going with sort of a soft and creamy sort of tablecloth, but again, not going super high contrast because I want to keep the focus on the two characters in this piece. And that finishes up the tablecloth. I'm going to use the same cream color of the tablecloth for my teapot. This late in the game, I don't want to introduce any drastically new colors or elements. I want to keep a very cohesive, nice, subtle color story. And of course, it's always nice when your teacups and your teapot match, so I'm going to use the same colors there again. I'm just going to be very careful to make sure that I don't lose Baby Yoda's cup into the tablecloth. And for the tiny, dainty little teaspoons, why not use some metallic silver, just like I did on the Mandalorian. Might as well tie into that, why not, huh? And tea would not be complete without some yummy, yummy little treats. So we're gonna go ahead and throw in a few little baked goods on a tiered server here. And now I'm gonna go back through and do a little bit of inking just to sort of fine tune things, draw out a few details, and just clean everything up.
And this is my finished painting of the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda having an adorable tea party. I think it turned out super cute and I'm very happy with it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and give it a quick like. I hope you will subscribe and ring the little bell to get a notification every time I upload a video. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.